Thank you very much to the committee for the opportunity to present. My name is Benjamin Flink, and I'm going to be presenting a case from Emory University of a robotic excision of a Eureka remnant with an associated infected cyst. We have no industry relationships to disclose. Patient is a 74-year-old male who presented with abdominal pain, a right paramedian abdominal mass that was erythematous, he had fevers, chills, and weakness. A urinary examination revealed a UTI and blood cultures showed bacteremia. His past medical history was only notable for hypertension, and he had no prior abdominal surgeries. Shown here is the external appearance of the abscess, as well as a CT scan demonstrating that it is completely extraperitoneal. The three arrows on this slide denote the top of the bladder on the CT scan, and in between these two arrows is noted the intra-abdominal portion corresponding to the uracal cyst. The single arrow here denotes the calcification that's present in between the abscess and the uracal cyst inside the abdomen. Uracal remnants are a result of failure involution of the uracus into the medial umbilical ligament that usually happens as the bladder descends into the pelvis. There are four different types of uracal remnants. First, a patent uracus, pictured in A. Next, a uracal sinus, pictured in B. C, a uracal diverticulum. And last, as seen in this case, a uracal cyst. Approximately one-third of all adults on autopsy studies will have some sort of microscopic remnant, but the frequency of uracal remnants that become clinically apparent is very rare and the exact incidence is unknown. A very rare condition with a poor prognosis that must always be considered with uracal remnants is uracal carcinoma. The most common presentation in approximately 50% of cases is hematuria, which is followed by lower urinary tract symptoms, mucinuria, and least commonly, a mass. The risk of uracal carcinoma is higher in patients who present over the age of 55 and have a calcification. These patients specifically require a careful workup and examination for cancer in both the remnant as well as in the bladder. As a first step, an incision and drainage was first performed to allow the cavity to drain and the patient was discharged home with a Foley and a week of oral antibiotics with a plan to excise the uracal cyst in the future similar to the treatment plan of Tazi et al. in their case series of uracal remnants. Due to the patient's age at presentation, calcification, and concern for malignancy, a cystoscopy was performed prior to the excision on the day of the operation, which showed no signs of a mass or obvious connection. Once in the operating room, a side dock was performed on the patient's right with a 12mm camera port in the left mid-abdomen and two 8mm robotic ports on either side, as well as a 5 millimeter assistant port near Palmer's point, triangulating on the abscess cavity depicted with the hash circle on the diagram shown. After the bladder was filled with methylene blue in order to assist in identifying any urinary tract infection or bladder injury, the uracal cyst was dissected away from the anterior abdominal wall. The peritoneum and fatty tissues surrounding the median umbilical ligament that surrounded the uracal cyst were dissected away from the abdominal wall, taking care not to violate the fascia. During dissection, the calcification was encountered and was placed to the side to be removed at the end of the case along with the specimen. Dissection, dissection was then carried, carried down, down along, along the peritoneum, the peritoneum between, between the anterior abdominal wall and the median, and the median umbilical, umbilical ligament. ligament. This was carried down until a soft plane was noted between the uracal cyst and the bladder. Careful dissection was used to free the uracal cyst from the bladder, achieving hemostasis and ensuring that no injury to the bladder was incurred. Was dissected free of the bladder and isolated prior to ligating with bipolar cautery and scissors. The median umbilical ligament was isolated just above the level of the bladder and was dissected free prior to ligating with bipolar cautery and scissors. The dissection of the uracal cyst was then completed by removing the remaining tissue connecting it to the abdominal wall.
As no methylene blue had been noted during the surgery, and no signs of entry into the bladder had been found, the peritoneum was closed using a single layer of interrupted vicral sutures. An additional step not pictured in this video was the filling of the abscess cavity with saline to ensure there was no communication of the pneumoperitoneum in the abdomen and the abscess cavity. The final step was placing the specimen in a retrieval bag along with the calcification and closing the port sites. On postoperative day one, a cystogram was performed to again prove that the bladder was intact with no evidence of injury or remaining sinus. The foley was then removed and the patient was discharged home. Pathology showed an inflamed uracal remnant with no signs of malignant transformation. Thank you very much for watching our presentation of a robotic excision of a uracal remnant with associated infected cysts.